There's a new AI video generator in town, and let me tell you, it's a doozy. This brings us to a total of four major AI video generators in the market. Luma Dream Machine, Runway, Kling, and now Minimax by Hilo Y. With both Luma and Runway recently releasing major updates to their models, the AI video space is quickly heating up, and I can't wait till these tools get good enough that creating stories becomes a seamless experience. However, with the release of these new models at the quality levels that are coming out, I'm left wondering if and whether we'll actually ever see Sora. Minimax is impressive, and I'd be tempted to say it's as good as what we saw demoed from Sora all those months ago. And I'll show you in just a brief moment. The new model, Minimax, is available for everyone to use for free, while it's an open beta. That's right, no payment. And as for my testing, you don't even need an account, although some other YouTubers have said that you do need to register, so your mileage may vary. There are a few limitations, however. It's text to video only, and clips are only six seconds in length. However, I imagine that once this beta is finished and they start requiring accounts and payments, that things will change. And so without further ado, let's just dive right in and start looking at these videos. So the link is in the description down below and it should take you straight to this page. Now, like Kling, the model does come from a Chinese company, so everything is in Chinese, but it's fairly straightforward. You've got your prompt box right here, your submit button down here, and then the video outputs are down here. And this is kind of like the discover tab in mid journey where you can see what other people aren't creating. So we're going to go through a couple of the videos that I created. I actually went through and regenerated some of the Sora prompts and, and some of the results are quite surprising. And then we'll come here and look at what a few other prompts are doing. So the first video that I created was this woman walking in a cyberpunk street. You know, already I was immediately wowed from this. The camera movements are phenomenal. The character models are great. The city looks vibrant in the background. And if you're not looking closely, you probably wouldn't even tell that this is AI generated. In fact, the only reason I might think it's AI generated is because I'm looking at the background and some of the neon signs don't really make a lot of sense. So after this, I decided to start trying out some of the Sora prompts. Now, obviously, the first thing I did was the iconic stylish woman walking down uh, Tokyo Street. And I gotta say, this is really impressive. And this is when I started to feel that this model is as good as Sora because this looks like it actually looks like another take from the same Sora model. And in fact, I'll pull it up here right next to this so you guys can have a look. And you can see that the differences are minimal. Now, some of the other prompts I did try while yielding really good results were questionable and leads me to wonder whether all of the training data is legal. So the next one was the famous woolly mammoth scene. And uh, yeah, it definitely looks like something out of Ice Age. In fact, uh, the, the leading mammoths look like the two main characters from the second movie. Uh, I, I can't remember their name. Maddie, I think, was one of the characters. Um, and then this is the one uh, played by, by Queen Latifah. So yeah, questionable training data. And I tried it again, you know, since it looks like Ice Age, I said, you know what, let me add in the sloth and the saber tooth again the mammoths are back there you know we've got manny and and the other one uh looks just like out of ice age our little saber tooth friend here the model looks like the saber tooth but it is a tiger so very cool that it was able to take what looks like the shape of that character from ice age but essentially apply a different skin and again this looks right out of the dreamworks movie what is even more interesting is the character consistency between these two uh, clips. You know, th these could just be different clips from the same movie. Because uh, the malice look exactly the same. The character modeling looks exactly the same. Now, again, that could just be due to the training data that this is what it thinks of, what it thinks of Wooly Mammoths. And there's not really much variance in there. But color me impressed. The next one I tried out was the red hel red cotton helmet in the desert video uh, and again very impressed the the entire scene is almost identical to what we saw in the sora video and again i'm going to pull it up here the camera angle is slightly different but that face is excellent there's absolutely no warping 
it, it looks shot out of a camera. The level of artifacting is no, is not at all. Granted, I'm not sure if that does look like a salt desert. I believe it should be white, but nonetheless, very, very impressive. Uh, the next one is the panning shot over the DC. Uh, again, the so Sorrow one is right, right next to it. I have to say this one was not as good as the Sorrow one, especially if you look at the road over here. Uh, it starts to get a little bit funny, but still impressive nonetheless. Uh, I'm guessing because there's so much flyover stock footage available, this is one of those types of videos that Luma and even Runway perform very well on. So I would actually say that this is one of the worst performing models when it comes to this type of shot. And then of course, the two pirate ships fighting in coffee. Now this one, granted, is not as good as the Sora one. Uh, there's not really a battle going on here. And the pirate ships almost look like toys. But despite that, it was able to generate it pretty well. Uh, it, this actually looks more like the aftermath of a fight with the one on the left kind of sinking there. Uh, but once again, you know, the, sh the shot is stable. There's no artifacting. It act it looks like I, I set up these toys and I, I just took the shot. So that's what's really impressive about this model is fine. It may not be able to follow the prompt perfectly, but there's no weirdness. There's no warping. There's no kind of strangeness that you get in a lot of these AI video. And here's another one. And again, not really getting the same stormy vibe that we got in the Sora video. Uh, this kind of feels more like, again, ripples. Uh, uh, they look kind of like toys floating around. They're not really having a battle. But once again, the AI did not struggle between frames. There's no weird warping happening here. The keyframes are excellent and it's it's a usable shot. So after trying these Sora ones, I, I went online and looked at a couple of more prompts. I looked for a few strange ones to try out and then I did a little experiment to see if I could get some character consistency. So this one is a golden shimmering god swallowing the sun. Not quite what I had in mind, but again, what keeps impressing me about this model is even though the prompt was really strange, the video is coherent. There, it, it kind of picks a direction that it wants to go in and it commits to it and doesn't do that weird thing that a lot of other models do where it kind of struggles to get two parts of a video together and you kind of get this character warping and thing and whatnot. Here, it committed to this concept and it followed through with a stable video, if that makes sense. So then after that experiment, I decided to see if I could get this cyberpunk character driving and then get two different shots. I tried that by including a name in my prom. So I called this character Ariel. And again, it reverted to this like 90s early 2000s 3d look and feel again it, it looks great I, I would have preferred if it was realistic but i just love how it just is stable the lighting is phenomenal so i again not quite what i wanted but still very impressive i tried it again to see if i could get the same character from a different angle but unfortunately it changed it it did keep that 3d aesthetic however because of the limitations of the model and the way that the you can just put a prompt in here. You can't really reference anything. They don't seem to have a character reference feature. You can't even upload an image. So it really is experimental at this point. I, I wouldn't be using it to try and create any kind of lengthy films simply because getting that consistency across clips is going to be uh, very random. And if we jump over here into Discover, we can look at a couple more clips that are impressive. But I, this is a really cool... Ooh. That's a really cool explosion. Uh, the visual effects are phenomenal. And the prompt over here is in English. Oh, this is a cute one. This is like a little 8-bit canvas. Oh, okay. So this is my first time seeing text come up here. And it says it right here. The avatar displays the holographic inscription, Volatility, 3 September 2024. So it seems to do a decent job with text as well. Uh, oh, here we go. This prompt is in Chinese. Very impressive image. Uh, very impressive video, once again. Uh, let me see if I can translate this. There we go. 16K ultra high definition surreal bird's eye view panoramic view of the vast pink felt world. The subject is a Mercedes Benz S class uh, that looked like a Mercedes. Yeah. So the prompting strategy, it, it seems to be able to take these nice long prompts where you're able to describe multiple elements. So it's described the car here. It has a great description of that background. We've got the camera shot here, surreal bird's eye view, panoramic view, and it's able to grab all of that and put it together. Now, granted, a lot of the prompts are in Chinese wild. So this reminds me of that ad video in uh, Stora, 
these insects are are kind of creepy, right? So uh, this reminds me of the uh, Will Smith video. Uh, I should probably do one of those. Uh, if you want to have a look, I will share it on my Instagram. Links down below. And, uh, oh, here we go. This model seems to be able to do anime pretty decently as well, which is something a lot of the other models tend to struggle with, especially Luma Dream Shaper. Whenever I've tried to give it any kind of animated video in the past, it really struggles with it. So this seems to have some of it in its training data. And that's Minimax. If you want to try it out, as I said, links are down below in the description. Please come by the Discord and share the videos that you're creating. I'd love to see more of this. And if you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe. If you want to grab a couple of prompts to experiment with in Minimax, the sponsors of this video, Prompt Crafters, have put together a small free prompt database for Minimax. The link is down below. Go ahead and check it out. And if you like what they're doing, they have a massive image prompt database, which is a great place for you to start from when generating images or frames for use with Sora and Runway. I use it all the time, especially since I have black canvas syndrome. I love it. Go and check it out. Links are all down below. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.